Hello, welcome to TechFab Dots. Today, I am going to discuss Azure Durable Functions Internal Mechanism. And this is a very important topic. So let's move ahead without wasting time. As you can see, all the green sections I have already covered and the highlighted one which is Internal Mechanism that I am going to discuss today. So there are some prerequisites and suggestions that I always share with my videos. For example, you should be having on your machine Azure Storage Emulator and explorer installed and if you're working or uh, you know developing all these things locally for dev and testing purpose but if you want to do all these things on the azure portal then you need a subscription okay so this is a portal link and i strongly recommend you to watch the previous recorded session for better understanding so let's recap of what azure functions quickly so azure functions is a serverless solution that allows you to write less code maintain less infrastructure and save on cost and on top of it durable function is an extension of azure functions that lets you write a stateful function in a serverless compute environment and what do we mean by extension that lets you define stateful workflows by writing orchestrator functions and stateful entities by writing entity functions using the azure function programming model the primary use case for durable function is simplifying complex stateful coordination requirements in serverless application and behind the scene extension manages state checkpoints and restart for you and allow you to focus only on your business logic okay so this is a brief recap so let's focus on the internal mechanism so as you can see in this image normally what happens there will be a one durable client which will call the orchestrator and this orchestrator will call further activities right and each activity has its own retry mechanism right so we were talking about the storing state when function execution will be stored in local states so that when the orchestrator re-execute the entire function when orchestrator re-execute the entire function to check the state of the activities it remembers what has been called and does not return any long running calls okay because if one activity is already executed and completed it it task then we don't want to re-execute right so all of this work out of the box you don't need to code it yourself but it is beneficial to know that's what we're going to discuss today orchestrator function defines a stateful workflows in code and invoke the activity function right and what it is saying it sleeps during the activity invocation and replays when we issues the request to start the activity activity started and its completion and later when it wakes up it checks for the result and that's it right which also provides a separation of concerns for defining the workflows and performing the actual activity note all code inside orchestrators sub orchestrators that we will discuss in the next video and activities should be deterministic and idempotent so deterministic and idempotent means every time you are running an activity that will return the same value if we are providing the same input okay so this is what it means by deterministic and idempotent so the next state is the storage provider Durable functions Azure storage provider is the default provider. Now you must be thinking what is it? In Azure storage provider, all function execution is driven by Azure storage queues. All function execution I am talking, okay? Orchestration and entity status and history are stored in Azure tables. Now you must be thinking where is Azure tables and where is Azure storage queues? So yes, we are talking about Azure storage explorer okay so don't worry about this i will leave a link in the description of this video from where you can go to the link you can download this on your machine and if you think about where it will be in our azure portal actual environment so you will find it under storage account here it is okay so orchestration and entity status and history are stored in azure tables these are the tables task hub name history and task hub name instances so let's read more about it so azure storage provider represents the task hub task hub is nothing that we are giving the name of it see task hub name and task hub name so azure storage provider represents the task hub in storage using the following component two azure tables 
store the instance state so these are the two tables history and instance they are one azure queue store the activity messages okay so there is one work item in which we store the activity messages this is the one test hub name work items and one or more azure queues store the instance messages each of these so called the control queues so all these four the 00, 01, 02, 03 are the control queues that represent the partition that is assigned a subset of all instance messages based on the hash of the instance id a few extra block containers here it is you can check under this block containers used to lease block and or large messages means when we are performing a large operation based on large data in that case block containers are also used i hope it is clear now let's go a bit in detail what about the storage queues so azure storage queues orchestrator entity and activity functions are triggered by internal queues in the function app task hub okay using queues in this way provide reliable at least once so if something is in the queue then we then it gives a surety at least once the message will be processed and message delivery guarantees there are especially two types of queues in durable function that we just seen work item queues these are the work item one queue to trigger a stateless activity functions remember here stateless activity functions by dequeuing a simple message at a time it means we are dequeuing one message at a time and another queues called remaining four called control queues to trigger the stateful orchestration okay so these four are for called stateful orchestration and entity functions azure queues store the activity messages and the messages in the queue which we generally say these four partition triggers the next function okay let me read it once again azure queue stores the activity messages and the messages in the queue triggers the next function so it makes use of event sourcing now you must be thinking what is event sourcing to play the current event and to trigger the next event right so event sourcing by mean we can see right you know this is structure now it is very familiar maybe after downloading this azure storage explorer you will you will feel more comfortable and you can see how it works but don't worry i will showcase you all these things in a practical manner by running the visual studio program how it looks like and what kind of data we can get from this tool so azure storage table are uh, stored the instance states these two table these store the instance states and the state of orchestrator is saved in the storage table right so durable function hub instance this is the very first table this is the one hub instance as instance are created a new row are added to this table we will see in a moment the partition key of this table is orchestration instance id or entity key there is one row per orchestration and it contains records for each orchestration instance with its input final output and runtime status so all this information we can get from this instance table and the second table is the history one and that contains event source event for each orchestrator instance okay don't worry i will show you in a moment an instance run the moment instance run or you can say as instance is run a new row are added to this table so in this picture you can see i am just demonstrating few things these three workers maybe you can consider these are the three virtual machines these are connected with the control queues and these are our instance table we have history and we have instance detail and control queue contains two types of uh, work item and the other partition control queues okay so, so the moment we are saying okay these are the workers these are the vm the table and the queue names mentioned above are default names for durable function but you can also change these names for example test hub name you don't want to use it but you can change it right how that we will discuss now so the event source event these are nothing but during the workflow execution event are stored for the following activities like when orchestration started activity scheduled an orchestrator goes to sleep then orchestrator started and activity completed then another activity scheduled and orchestrator completed 
right so this is a very simple uh, steps i will show you on the uh, microsoft website more detail from where uh, you can read more about it but if you want to change the that i was talking about the task hub name so you can go to your uh, solution part and you will go to the uh, host.json file there you can mention your maybe your favorite hub name right so if storage is shared among different functions app then it is advisable to specify custom hub name in host.json a task hub durably persists all instances states and all the messages okay so the other option is for patching it means when we are running one request at a time and for example if you want to do a multiple request multiple request processing at a single time which is called the batching so that can also deal with the large amount of data okay that we will discuss in any other session this is a solution that i was using in my all previous recorded sessions so i will i already opened one for you which is the asing http api bit and in this in this as usual there are three simple steps one is client function and one is orchestration function and one is activity function so in client function what we are doing we are simply calling our orchestrator function and from orchestrator we are just calling the activity function okay and if i the installed azure storage explorer how it looks like let me show you by default when you will open your storage explorer it will look something like this by default you will see this get a started page we will discuss about this later we can just close it if you will click on any of this tab and just double click on that so you will move to this area right where we can see all the task of name history and if you click on instance we can see all the chances and all the queue messages if they are generally it happens when message came and it got processed it just dequeues so we always see you know there is no message in such queue but i will try to see if we can see some messages here okay so let me go back to my solution and try to uh, hit the trigger and see if there any data comes here because if i now there is no such data right let me go back i have already started the solution let me see the com solution let me see the console screen i can see when http trigger activity trigger and orchestration is trigger is ready to consume so i will just copy this url and just paste it paste into the browser okay we just copy it as always i get the response uri through which i can get the result but ideally because i place a breakpoint in my solution i can go back and check if there is any breakpoint or not i am in my solution and i can see my um, breakpoint is active here and this function is in progress so let me go back to the uh, azure storage explorer and see if there are any data generated over there so if i see here if i refresh this data okay it is loading yes it can see a partition key or you can see the instance id is already generated and what other information we can see here you can see the runtime status is pending because the big point is over there right and uh, the name is this orchestration trigger the task coming we can see let's see in the history if we have something if i refresh this nothing let me see if there is any uh worker item like right now there is no worker item neither it is okay 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 task 2 is loading even no data here if i check out this partition 1 even here we don't have any data as of now because the data is not created because it's immediately processed we can complete the request let me just show here and the history okay under history we have nothing if I release this breakpoint and complete the request, it will continue. Okay, now it is completed. So you can see in this output window, we can see it says orchestration started, activity started, say hello to Tokyo, orchestration to started, say hello to Delhi, right? So our request is almost completed. So we can go back in the explorer and we can see is the all activities uh, completed and we can see the data over there if i refresh this once again okay now 
the different data right earlier it was blank so what we can see here ideally the partition key right the timestamp and it was executed is played or not and what are the event types that i was talking about so event type we have our position started and execution started then actually our activity gonna start right you can see task schedule it means this is our activity trigger then orchestration completed then another orchestration started and task completed and task should do so these all are the activity information you can see here you can see this is the instance id and execution id right and you can see hello tokyo is executed over here so all these data is here if i go to the instance again if i refresh it now we can see if i go back here it says running status is running right maybe it is taking time it is task curve it is the overall time information so i will strongly recommend you to do it yourself right and what information you get on your machine when running this okay so there are a few more important links that i want to show you so this is the table that we are using the queues which gonna use run time because queue message is dq so we are not able to see here and for the long running uh, batches on the long running processes we use block container as well let me show you a few more important links as i said earlier so this is a very important link this is a durable orchestration where you can read more about the orchestration identity reliability and orchestration history table that we have just seen in the history table you can see the execution started orchestration started and task schedule like how it's working maybe you will run it on your machine you can see some lazy or some fast behavior it depends on your com machine configuration right and another important link is the azure storage provider function where you can see how in detail how it segregates data across different partition and different messages and it's release and these container is table and the third important link is the task hub that i shared with you that you can apply a custom name for your task hub as well right and it's instance state and message state all these three links I will, I will be there I will put it in the comment section of this video my storage emulator is currently working that's why I am able to run this storage explorer so make sure that is already active on your machine I hope you like this video now to run this program you need especially two things one is the Microsoft Azure storage emulator and the second is microsoft azure storage explorer right so it is mandatory to run the explorer only after microsoft azure storage emulator if you if your ex, uh, emulator is not running then probably you will get this error message you are attempting to access an emulator storage account without running emulator and let me tell you there is no cost associated with it you can use it completely free and all important links will be given in the description of this video so i hope uh, you like all the demonstration if you have any question any suggestion you can leave into the comment box and if you like this video share it among your groups and with your circle i will see you in the next video till then bye bye